Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, we are going to go into another topic of fasting troubleshooting, and that is, what happens if you gain weight while you're fasting? Gosh, that's happened to a lot of our resetters, so in this video, I want to show you five things you need to think about and, and incorporate if you want to unstick your weight and live a fasting lifestyle. Okay, there are five things. I'm gonna go through them really fast. And if you followed me at all, you probably have heard me say some of these and some of them are new. Actually, one of them, the last one, is the one that I've been really teaching my academy members and is, is that little extra step. So let's start with the first one. If you are fasting, and let's say, let's use the example like you all of a sudden come to intermittent fasting and you're going 15 hours, you do it for a couple weeks, and all of a sudden you're like, well, I'm not losing any weight. Like my friends said that, that, that they lost weight. It's possible you just haven't fasted long enough. So you need to stick with that 15 hours a month, two months, three months. It may need, you gotta incorporate it as a habit. Remember, the goal is to go from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. You are making a metabolic switch. And depending on how saturated your cells are with sugar, it may take a little bit of time with fasting to be able to make that switch. So the first thing is make sure that you have been fasting long enough. There's one other, one other little caveat with that, and that's that you might need to extend your fast a little bit longer. So instead of 15, you might need to go 17. You might need to throw in a 24 hour. My favorite one for weight loss is 36 hours. So maybe every couple of weeks you throw in a 36 hour fast just to force some pressure. We call that a hormetic stress, where you just put some pressure on those cells so that they go start to realize that they're supposed to be a fat burner. So make sure that you're fasting long enough. Okay, second one, and this is a huge one, is remember that there's two sides of the fat burning equation. There is making ketones and being a fat burner. We do that with fasting, but there's also what are you eating? So look at what you're eating. If you're fasting 17 hours every day and then you're eating a high carb, high sugar, high bad oil diet, you're gonna struggle with weight loss. It's what you do in that eating window that determines the fat burning capabilities you have in your fasting window. So make sure that you're eating really high quality food. And I always say, stay away from the toxic three, which is the bad oils, the high sugar food, and the chemicals. So those three will keep you stuck in insulin resistance. It doesn't matter how long you fast. It doesn't matter how, long you, how many carbs you keep down. You gotta avoid those three things. So make sure you're looking at what you're eating. Okay, step number three, or, or troubleshooting point number three, which is, are you varying your fasts? Remember, we are primal. We were meant to come out of our caves and look around and go, we don't have any food, let me go find some food and go hunt food and bring back to our village. And then we were meant to sit down and eat. So make sure that you are varying in and out of what we call feast famine cycling, where you're eating good quality food and you're feasting, but then you're fasting. And some days you might fast 15 hours, other days you go 36, day and a half, you go 36 hours, and you wanna vary your fast. My favorite variation, I've explained it here many times on my YouTube, is what I call a 5-1-1. Five days a week you intermittent fast, one day a week you do a longer fast, 24 hours is my favorite, and then one day a week you don't fast. That is how you're now getting into this feast famine cycling. Number four possibility for you could be that your detox pathways are closed. So remember that the main organ we're having an effect on when we fast is our liver. But the liver has to push out all of the toxins through the common bile duct and the common bile duct dumps it into the small intestine. So the number one pathway to have open is your gut. Are you having daily bowel movements? So if you're not in your eating window, you need to up your fiber. You need to up your polyphenol, probiotic, prebiotic foods. 
done a lot of videos on that. So make sure that what that your pathway, specifically your, uh, your digestive pathway is open. Are you sweating? Maybe you need to get into a sauna. Maybe you need to put on a, sw on a sweatshirt and a hat and go out and, and, and run and get some, some movement and get some sweat going. Maybe you need to look at your lymph, like, uh, you know, are, are, is your lymph stagnant? And it, you need to get on a, like a vibration plate or get into an infrared sauna and get some lymph movement. So it's possible that your pathways are stuck. So that's number four. Okay, and number five, this one came up this weekend with my resetters and they had so many ahas and so I wanted to bring it to you. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast among many other things. All you gotta do is click on this link right here and enjoy. Remember, when we come to building a fasting lifestyle, we're trying to undo, most of us, I should say, I probably should speak for myself here, we're trying to undo the years of high carb living, where we were eating all day and we're eating all the wrong foods, and we're trying to undo that mess. And so what we don't realize is over the years, our body has stocked away as stored sugar, and it stored it in our fat, it stored it in our liver, and it stored it in our muscles. So when we're fasting, we're trying to go after that stored sugar. But sometimes we need to do more to, than just fasting to be able to go after that sugar. And this is where exercise comes in. But it's not just exercise, it's HIIT training. So HIIT training is where you're taking 30 seconds of an activity and you're going all out. So if it's a jumping jack, you're just, massive jumping jack all as fast as you can and then you rest for 30 seconds and then you the next 30 seconds maybe you run and, and sprint in place or you do squats but you you want to have your heart rate go up and down that will signal to the body to release stored sugar specifically in the liver and in the muscles so if you've done all the other things i just mentioned and you're like yeah 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 i've heard this before Guess what? It's time to just do the good old fashioned thing of exercise. And when you exercise, you, all the other pieces will start to fall into place. So those are the five things. Let me know, you guys, we're an amazing community here on YouTube. And a lot of you are fasting experts and some of you are brand new. So let me know if you've done any of these five things, put it in the notes or in the comments so the rest of the community here can learn from your experience. So five things, make sure you're fasting long enough, look at what you're eating, vary your fast, open your detox pathways and put on your running shoes and make sure that you're working out. And as always, you guys are amazing. This is the year, this is the year we live out of fear. We get out of fear, we get into empowerment and we fall in love with our body again and that's what a fasting lifestyle will do for you. So as always, I hope this helped. So on the next video, I have, it's called, do this before you sleep to avoid belly fat. And there's habits you want to do the night before, and there's habits you want to do in the morning, and all of those make a big difference. Make sure your room is cool. If our mattress is cool, if the room is cool, it activates the parasympathetic nervous system. This is a little bit like cold plunges.